I may have whined about not having my bench this morning. Well, you have your bench, you pretty I little I told thing. you you didn't have to move it just because I whined. Oh, that's not all you make my kitty. Well, me and the kitties, what were we going to do for an entire day when not have our bench? I wouldn't know. I don't know what life was like before the bench. That's right. Thank you. Gray, I want to play. Where are you? Come on, Gray. I want to play. Oh, you big bully. He's coming. She knows. She just went to the garage through the cat door. It's gorgeous out here. Minus the mosquitoes that attacked me while I was enjoying my bench. That was not fair. Our, 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 uh, boardwalk hadn't dried that much overnight. Don's yeah. talking dew points and yeah well it was near the dew point. Like the dew formed all stuff last night. Yeah hopefully it'll dry out good during the day today because we really do need to stain it before we walk on it so much it's just all dirty again. I wasn't expecting anything today so you're allowed to come up empty-handed. Oh. I won't but yeah. Well the, the mailbox was like Lonely. I looked out the back door and Tux has found the new bench cushions. Now look, I took them in for the summer because we was having an inch of rain three times a week and too mosquitoey and hot to sit over there anyway. And I told Don though, they're kind of out for the fall now. And I am not surprised he has made himself at home you know don and i really are always trying to do stuff to stay healthy and um we've read a lot about it's good for you to get up and down off the floor, the floor. don never gets down on the floor although he does bend oh, and I, contortion in some yeah. of the projects he's doing but getting up and down is you know not a thing yeah, yeah yeah it's not hard but it, you know i as a kid you know you just like jump up and flop down and you know don't even think about it well I'm pretty much like, oh, I need to get down. Oh, okay. Let me ease down and ease back up. So he's going to try when I'm down here on my Lego projects to sit with me for 10 minutes or something just to get up and down off the floor at least once a day to kind of... It's different muscles. Right. I've been up and down three, four times already. I'm working on my roof sections yeah. like I said I was going to do. Yeah, um, it's coming together nicely. She's been sitting on the floor for hours per day. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to, you know, it just works another muscle group. Yeah. And I got hopes of grandkids someday, so I want to be able to get up and down off the floor. It's really important to me. Little kids do stuff down on the, the floor. floor. Yeah. yeah, but we figure, you know, Donna work his way up. If he could do 10 minutes today, he set an Alexa timer, yeah. then he could, uh, you know, just work his way up a bit. That's right. So you can see where this thing bends now. And I ended up using black pins, so they're hard to see, but inside that little joint there inside that hinge are our pins that allow it to move keep it together but allow it to flex a little bit well I'm not gonna say that I'm done because I'm still waiting for the toppers to come and um, there's another black um, trim piece that goes here and these um, spires need to go on top of the toppers. I, I, and you know, I'll probably be looking at it and futzing with it here for a little while. Uh, I'm also waiting for a black piece here on the roof. But, um, you know, I'm like really super duper close now. And I have my three roof sections put together and I'm ready to install them. I'm ready to set this stuff together. I'm ready to, I'm ready to make it a house. So, uh, let me do that. Well, this is how far I have to get away so you can actually see the whole thing in one, you know, frame. Um, I'm happy with how it turned out. Dawn's out here with me checking it out. Um, you know, you kind of got a feel for it the other day, just not quite this, um, quite this put together. I will walk around to the backside as sort of, it's so big it is hard to light up. Are you gonna measure how big it is? It's tall. <laughs> it's big, Tim. It's big. <laughs> Andy, it's big. How big is it? <laughs> so it's um uh twenty three and a half inches, and that is fifth almost sixty centimeters. Might come um, fifty nine centimeters. So it's just shy of two feet. Yes, just shy of two feet. Okay. 
in the backyard. I really think that the stuff I added from that hidden side kit is very interesting. And yeah. there's something like 31. I mean, there's a ton, a ton of windows if you count each pane. Like that's four windows right pain, there. I get it. Pain. pain. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So again, waiting on the toppers, waiting to replace this piece. Um, waiting for one black piece up here on the tower. Uh, I said, I'm waiting for one black piece on the tower. Somewhere there's a missing piece. Anyway, <laughs> you get the gist. Congratulations, sweetie. I'm very proud of you. That's a lot of effort and time and, you know, you really had stuck with it until you got her done. Well, anybody that watches uh, Trevor, uh, what's his YouTube channel called now? It's not Model 3 Owners Club anymore. Yeah, it's uh, um, Tesla Owners Online or yeah, something. Tesla Owners Online. Yeah, Trevor Page. He likes to do the Lego modular buildings, and um, he has them in his house. And so if you look down here where there's these two holes, there, it's on both sides. When you get your next modular house built, you put a pin there, and that helps the houses to stay uh, together so they don't move. Uh, so, in my lifetime, there will be more modular houses built. And my take would be haunted or Victorian or Gothic, some on a theme. I don't know that they have to look all Halloween-y, but... They would definitely be Victorian Gothic kind of building styles. So. Yeah, well, it's a toss up. Is it Halloween or Christmas? My kitten's favorite time of the year. Right, exactly. <laughs> they have a cool gingerbread kit this year. Who knows? <laughs> Long term, we'll figure out where we're going to put it. I'm thinking maybe on top of the grandfather clock um, in the family room or on top of the curio cabinet where the current Halloween ceramic haunted village is. Um, I am going to start meeting with the boys at the school um, on Google Meet on Thursday uh, once a week for an hour. I'm not sure what we're really going to be able to accomplish since um, we, uh, you know, aren't able to have hands-on with the robot this year like I have done in other years. It's really tearing at me that we aren't able to do that in person a few of these kids starting the first week of November will be at the school, but probably not all of them. Some, the state is going to start sending some kids in, and some of the kids on the rope that signed up for robotics may be uh, choosing to go in. I don't know which ones yet. I'll, I'll kind of figure that out. But... Um, I'm just going to do what I can, and I was telling Don, I think one of the things I'm going to do Thursday is show the kids these are the projects I've done over the summer. I, you know, as you guys know, there's been quite a few, and just try to be an inspiration if you've got all these bricks laying around your house. Um, you know, you can do cool stuff like this, and, and that some projects that are worth doing, you don't do in an hour. You know, you do over three hours a day for a month. Um... You know, things are not all instant gratification, instant complete. Things require planning. Um, you know, this one roof panel here in the front, this little tiny roof panel here, it took me over an hour and I had to take it apart two times before I finally figured it out because it's reflexive and the instructions I had didn't allow you to rotate. There was no 3D image. And, um, you know, I had to take it apart and I had to redo it. And I had to, you know, so... Um, I just think it, that this is a good life lesson here with stick with it. You can always take the bricks apart and fix what's not right. You can continue to tinker, fine tune, finesse, get it to where it's supposed to be. There's just, you know, plus the engineering, but there's a lot of good life lessons here too. We are going to drive down to Sanford to Harbor Freight. Guess what I need? What do I need, Donnie? Bins. I need Lego storage bins so I can get my project stuff organized straightened up you know like i make don um clean up in between every project well i gotta follow my own advice and i'm gonna put ruby back in the garage johnny had a private taekwondo lesson and uh, we're gonna take jules and then he's got another taekwondo lesson tonight so when we get home we'll leave jules out he can switch <laughs> sides of the garage Hi, Ruby. So this is now a very regular route for us, but for those that might not remember, Sanford is south, and it's a 25-mile, 34-minute drive. It's, it's equivalent 
for us uh, in time going to carry. Right. Uh, it's a little more in miles. It's a more enjoyable drive though because... Oh, by a ton. Yeah, the country roads, twisty roads, uh, the, the traffic, we come on the proper side of Sanford so we don't have to go through stop and go. Right. I mean, there is one road we uh, have to turn on that was because that guy was slowing down and turning and I was accelerating. Um, the, um, there's, there is one quarter of a, I mean, literally one traffic light we have to go through that uh, is on a busy road, but we get off immediately. So we make the left turn and then we get off. So yep. it's not. It's on this side of town and yeah. it's easy. It's really easy peasy. And if we don't need to go to the Walmart today, but if we did, the Walmart's right there Across too. Across the street. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my favorite part of the road. This guy just literally turned in front of us. Yeah, he pulled out. He, he couldn't see us, but it ended up that he pulled out in front of us and Don right. had to brake pretty good. He wasn't unsafe. And be careful because he can't keep on the road either and he's going to be throwing stuff back up on us. Yeah. Oh, well. I need to find something to take a picture of so we can pull over for a few minutes. Don's uh, trying to see if we brake check today on the same spot on this road that we usually brake check, check on. In, yeah. Just for yeah, this is one of those amusement, fun, entertainment. There yep, is. there it is, right it's there. She went from 60 down to 37. Seven. 30, steady stick. And now she is picking it back up, and Don is in autopilot, and he did not. Um, the speed limit sign break or use the accelerator right and this stayed the same that stayed the same the only thing is the actual, the, uh, speedometer, the actual speedometer okay I've been filming a lot on the way down today. I'm, I am uh, planning to film more on the way back because we are heading into the sun and it's pretty bright and it's just, an, it's not a pretty sky in this direction and I hate sunglasses so I can't see really good. I got my sun visor down now. Um, we did watch Kyle's one year review of his Model 3 video right before we left the house. That was a really good video. Of course, Don and I are really familiar with Tesla Phi, so all the charts and things Kyle was throwing up were sort of similar to the stuff we always put up. Um, we tend to do two reviews a year, it seems, which is good because they're about six months apart. We do one uh, on New Year's, yep. sort of like a year-to-year -year review. And then we also do one at Ruby's yearly review uh, on her birthday, which is in June, June the 14th. So we're about six months apart. So we end up putting up charts about Ruby's driving habits twice a year. Uh, and, I, and we appreciate the amount of time and oh, yeah. effort that Kyle put into that because we know because, you know, New Year's Eve for us has oftentimes been uh, spreadsheets and Tesla Fi to try to get that out the next day. Right. Um, and just think, Donnie, this year... Two cars. That's right. You get to do it for Jules and Ruby come oh, New Year's. <laughs> oh, lucky me. Well, at least they don't have the same birth date. So uh, right. we yeah. won't be doing the Although, uh, birthday. to apart. Yeah. So at least that won't be on the same day. But yeah, it could be a busy New Year's Eve this year. Right. <laughs> Stop to check out the red stuff. They got orange stuff, yellow, and then down on the other side of Dawn is green and blue. And black I guess I was looking at the tissue box holder trying to decide if I wanted one of them on the corner of the wall somewhere out there it's, it's really heavy well the to the uh, paper towel holder is because it's got magnets serious well, magnets that got two magnets too it's magnetic oh really okay yeah, it's got magnets um, trust gotcha. me I, I didn't know I didn't think I see Okay. Yeah. Well, that's through the So you don't necessarily have to mount to the wall, but there were mounting holes too, if you well, wanted I guess to. I think is uh, we probably. I mean, I don't have a neat. I think we got a good paper towel holder so that's yeah. mounted, but the tissue but, but the for tissue or thing. or gloves, either one would or probably gloves. we we could use. Yeah. 
The moment of truth, do they have my storage bins in stock? I'm getting nervous. I think the answer is no. That one up there, oh, here they are. Phew! That one up there is the wide ones. I don't want the wide ones. I want the small ones. I just use them. So I researched um, shop stools and I really wanted a red cushion for the garage and I certainly don't want a flame, but that was only $35. It's only $35 and it's actually much more comfortable than the one, uh, the farther one is that the metal uh, rim hits your under part of your leg. Yeah, in. Because what happens is I want to play my piano and Don doesn't mind me doing that when he's out there working, but he's doing electronics at the workbench and we only have one comfortable stool. You know, 30, we'll say 30 minute comfort. You're not going to sit on it for four hours and watch TV, but 30 minute comfort and, um, so now we'll each have a stool right. and before JB comes, you know, if we're going to get a second stool anyway, we might as well have it while he's here. That's right. And I don't think $35 is horrible. Right. Stay tuned for if I put some sort of a red fabric cover over it. The buggy is full. Right. Yeah, I would have bought a stool someplace else, but I really, really re I researched all the automotive places, Walmart, Amazon, Wayfair, Costco. I mean, I really looked and I could not find anything or anything I liked was $150 a stool and I was going to want two of them. So I was like, yeah. So for 35 bucks, I, I totally can live with that. Just looking over at that little off-road experience Don took Jules on. <laughs> My girl is rearranging stuff. She don't like the rattles and she didn't like my packing job at all. So I was fired. What? I was fired. <laughs> well, she, you know, one of us can load and one of us can't. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I got fired and told just, just to sit here and keep my and mouth all shut. The stuff safe. Yeah. She's doing a wonderful job. Wonderful job. Oh, it's so good. I feel so much better now. <laughs> Come on now, be nice, play nice, play nice. We got a lot of stuff. Get out and do my best. Come on now. So we've we've got it all anchored, and you want me to get my cargo net out? Huh? You want me to get the cargo net out? No, I didn't get no cargo net out. <laughs> I haven't damaged hey. any Tesla Hot Wheel cars or. Uh, Xbox controllers in the process. Hey, you be either. careful with my plastic stool there now. Huh? You be careful with my pa plastic folding step stool. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're with those. You can bang those around. They're going to get beat up. Alright. She did a wonderful no job. more sliding. We'll test, we'll test that out here as soon as we All get out. Alright, you test it. It ain't going nowhere now. Alright. It's not Kyle proof drift worthy. Right. But it's Dawn safe to Fuquay worthy now. Because yeah. we made two turns and both times it shifted and I'm like, uh-uh. Well. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh. Alright. You did good. Thank Us you. Us girls that are used to feel, filling the trunk with That's shopping good. purchases or things. Yeah, it more or less stayed in place. Yeah, we have more of a milky blue today than that bright blue with clouds, but it's still a very nice day out here. It's 74 degrees. It couldn't be any more perfect. And no humidity. Yeah. We'll take it. In. Yeah, I said to Don this morning I need to be able to sit on my bench because, you know, we only have just a few days that are just right. It'll go from being too hot to being chillier than is convenient before we know it. So, I don't want to pass up on the perfect days. Which, of course, is why we're staying in the first place now this week. Don was saying tomorrow, you know, it's going to be mid-afternoon before he goes out there to stay because the dew overnight will need time to dry off too. It's not like even if you wanted to, you could go out at 8 a.m. and do the deck because uh, 
there's so much condensation overnight right now. Get some pretty heavy dews. Yeah, the bench cushion's wet in the morning. I literally sort of like need to put a towel down not to be wet from sitting on it. wanted to talk about Tesla Canada's order of oh, semi trucks right uh, there's been in the news for the last week or last week sometime electric and then uh, some other people like Nikki on transport evolved did a piece on or mentioned the fact that um, Tesla uh, received an order from Walmart Canada for 130 trucks semi, semi -trucks. Tesla semis and, and I am totally thrilled uh, that Walmart Canada put an order in for 130 Tesla semi trucks but I think that the stated reason that Walmart did that officially was they have uh, goals to be zero uh, net neutral by um, 2040 I think there's little more to the story I don't think that's the real reason and here's my my thinking on that first of all if Walmart US put in a hundred an order for 130 okay maybe that's only like 10% of the fleet but I don't know how many semi trucks are in Canada but um, I got a feeling 130 is a significant percentage of the Walmart trucks in Canada maybe 20% I, I I don't know you think there's a thousand semis uh, Walmart semis in Canada alone but now um, so I would have thought these uh, news outlets like Electrek especially since Electrek the, uh, the guy is in Canada I think they should have dug a little bit deeper and seen if there's some type of uh, Canadian incentive either like possibly free electricity or free charging infrastructure for commercial not this stuff for the home for consumers but for commercial some type of incentive because why would if this was two years or three years from now and that the semi the Tesla semi had been proven to deliver all these great cost savings you could understand Canada putting it, Walmart Canada putting it in but right now why do you pull the trigger this fit I mean they're buying a, the Tesla semi basically sight unseen and they're putting in a big order for a, a chunk of, of things. And 2040 is 20 years from now. Why wouldn't you put in tw an order for 25 this year and then 25 next year? You know, something along that. Why put the order in for 130? So possibly there's a nod, nod, wink, wink deal between Tesla and Walmart. But you know, I don't think Walmart does those kinds of deals because of that Solar City problem with Tesla a couple years ago. You know, they pretty much want all the I's and dotted and the T's cross and so I don't see that I guess the other speculation is a little bit to do with um, possibly they buy their trucks in Canada maybe there's a tax advantage or disadvantage and then those trucks come back and forth across the US border and get used in the US I don't know uh, you know um, I think there's a significant number of merchandise that comes from the US goes to Canada but you know Walmart imports from China and then it goes up it doesn't all maybe come through Vancouver to I, I, I don't know 
And then the last little piece of this kind of thing that I was thinking, you know, Tesla has not talked about the mega charger or whatever this thing this for charging these semis. And Walmart did this deal with Electrify America and during the first couple phases of that uh, settlement in down in the US Electrify America basically paid a substantial part of the infrastructure cost so if you would if you were a property owner and you said yeah sure you can install a DC fast charger on my property you know I'll sign some type of a contract but you know Electrify America pretty much paid for everything and you just provided the the real estate so I think that's what has to do with Walmart and why Walmart signed up a lot of Electrify America because I'm thinking Electrify America is going to tell Tesla I get it you got your Tesla proprietary plug but we want a CCS plug that can charge at 350 kilowatts because we've got this deal with Electrify America where the trucks when they go out to these remote stores they're going to drop their trailer off and the tractor while they're unloading the trailer the tractor is going to drive around and plug into the 350 kilowatt electrify america charger and recharge the car so i i mean the the tractor so i think the semis are going to have both the proprietary tesla mega charger plug and the ccs plug 350 kilowatt or whatever the charger will do uh, the at the big Walmart hub they'll have the the high power megawatt charger but out at these little stores out in the middle of nowhere they're gonna probably depend on um, either no charging and or CCS type chargers from Electrify America so I would have thought that uh, the news outlets would have probably did a little bit more research on that uh, to find out what's what's the real story because that 2040 that seems like a long way away for an unproven technology uh, not that Tesla won't deliver but it's just there's something there just doesn't pass my sniff test there's got to be a little bit more to it 130 is a lot of trucks so it looks like we got fall sports over here at South Park ball field I guess that's two it's either one or two and not seeing um, a lot of masks and I mean people are not on top of each other but they're not spread out too far either I wouldn't call it I didn't I didn't I didn't know we had town sports that started back up maybe because we went into phase three we're allowed to have sports now I don't know I hope it works out okay I mean that's a sincere I hope it works out okay he might move when I come by tucks move really you think he might move oh <gasps> it's, my god it's tucks and gray on the cushion i really look at them all snuggly <laughs> they're all snuggly up there gray likes to be near tucks tucks is okay if gray's not as near <laughs> poor girl i should tell johnny they're there he might want to come out and sit with them for a minute right he likes to do that. Well, those metal things rattling didn't mean anything was moving, although <clears throat> well, I did what I could. I got your guacamole made. Wow. Done. So all that, I have not wiped the jewels. We went to... Fayetteville and back. Well, we went to Whole Foods on Tuesday. The last time I washed it, jewels was a couple weeks ago and we didn't drive much and then Tuesday we went Whole Foods Whole Foods because I did wash her when we got back from the train place right so I washed her I didn't like do a super duper that was sort of a half wash that was a half wash but I did blast the wheels right all right so a lot of brake dust no that's all the brake dust from no. all the tires no no that's just one okay but sweetie this is like in comparison to Ruby, it's not much. Well, you would know. Right. I don't do the... I've done the wheels a couple right, times. I but yeah, I, 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 I'm just saying that this One is... One new, fresh, charged battery later. Right. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is that uh, I would say this is a third. A third as much as typical. If we drove Ruby that far, I think this is about a third... Uh, certainly less than half and I, I would even 
Uh, I'm just saying is that Ruby, it just, there's a lot of brake dust. But of course now, both trips are, we, me and I both are high users of automatic. Uh, right, I tend uh, to use traffic aware cruise control right, and right. you tend to use autopilot, but both of both, us are letting the car uh, handle the braking. That's right, the car is doing most of the slowing down yep. for traffic lights and stops and all that type of stuff. Uh, cars in front of it. So I would say that um, the regenerative, I don't know why, I'm just simply saying there's not a, not as much brake dust on on jewels as there is on Ruby. Okay. Yeah, Don was out here before he did the wheels. He was out here and he did yeah, the, uh, the did the bug guts. And I, I did reapply the spray wax. Okay. Uh, the, the, the liquid wax spray spray on wax i did reapply that because now it's been twice that was the second cleaning with the, the the spray stuff and you know that stuff's relatively inexpensive it goes on really easy so i just went on and hit it not the time. stuff that's in your hand right now because the spray wax is a yellow yeah, off-white color there by your feet. right exactly what you got now looks like the no rinse yeah, wash and shine no rinse, wash versus the rain x window that's stuff right. that you uh, washer fluid that sometimes you use on the wheels too i gotta mix up some more of this this is really running low so i think the uh, little dryer is running the air conditioner thing oh in the uh hvac yeah, unit so that it quiet. uh yeah. gets the moisture out it gets the moisture out the gotcha moisture. i think it's doing it because i could barely hear it run well i was gonna say with those black wheels how can you see the brake dust well, anyway well that's what i, I actually kitten that's what started me i said i wonder how now that we've went to the train museum and i washed it okay great so the wheels were more or less brake dust free and so now we drove it to whole foods then we drove it to fayetteville and back and now we've drove it to sanford and back we've drove it maybe 200 miles total I i'm throwing a number out and that was so well you just seen i just yeah. wiped it and it's just like this yep. is the front and the front's always the bad the back right no big deal but I, i'm very i'm pleased trust me i'm very pleased well tuck's got down all on his own and now slate's trying to get up there and get some time with, in with mama it's totally fine that y'all are on the cushions i'm tired of keeping them in the van i'm tired of waiting to use them I'm just enjoy them it's the right time of the year to enjoy them a break for dinner but i uh have made good progress on <laughs> filling up the new bits